Hey, well, welcome everyone uh, to Evening Prayer tonight uh, on Thursday night. It's really good to see you. Uh, and we, uh, we're getting ready this week uh, for our final online service this Sunday. Uh, so we really hope you can join us for that. Uh, you might be getting out of town, but uh, we're still going to be online uh, for one last time. And it's Pentecost Sunday, so uh, it's a really big one for us. We really hope you can join us uh, as a church. But we're in a Matthew's Gospel, and actually tonight it's a really good lead-in in, in preparation really for Pentecost Sunday because we've got uh, to the section of the parables. Uh, Jesus, as we see sort of throughout Matthew's Gospel, preaches and teaches in lots of different uh, ways. But one of the most interesting ways that he teaches the crowds is through parables. And parables are these very uh, simple farming stories, good for Kiwis, uh, very kind of simple imagery, and yet there's something really deeply subversive at the heart of these stories. And so what we see is Jesus quite often has to say, like in tonight's reading, uh, if you have ears, listen really hard, really peel your ears because you're going to need to hear the message right at the heart of what I'm saying. And so these stories are quite uh, deceptively simple, but they're also subversive. And so tonight we are reading out of uh, the parable of the sower, which is really one of Jesus's main uh, sort of king metaphors, really, or king parables. Uh, of which a lot of the other stories hang. And it's subversive because it's really familiar imagery to Israel. So through the Old Testament prophets, uh, they often used the language of harvest to explain what God was going to do one day, that he was going to um, wipe off uh, the unrighteous kingdoms of the earth and he was going to set up Israel as the great harvest, uh, a new thing. And so when Jesus starts using harvest imagery, people know what he means. Uh, and uh, the crowds are really believing that maybe he finally is the man for the job that he's going to deliver. And so Jesus uh, uses this uh, imagery really subversively in the parable of the sower. And so what we see is that actually this uh, great harvest, the sweeping aside, is not going to happen at the national geopolitical level as everyone expected. It's actually going to happen at the deeply personal level, at the level of each person's heart. And so that's where we get into um, the subversive story of the parable of the sower tonight. And down through uh, the centuries, there's been this argument raging theologically about what really matters. You know, what really changes the way we think and the way we live? Is it uh, God's grace or is it our faith response? And what I really love about the parable of the sower is it actually holds these two truths in uh, really balanced tension. That what we see is this incredibly powerful seed of God's gospel of his kingdom. And yet it can only thrive in fertile soil. And that soil is our own hearts. And so we're going to read this uh, parable. I hope that you uh, can hear it. I hope that you get the subversive story at the heart of it. Um, and it's coming out of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12. Um, Matthew, actually chapter 13, <laughs> verses 1 to 9. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying... A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred 60 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The other thing about this parable that has really struck me is uh, again this reminder of um, what happens uh, in order for us to take on these truths and for them to actually change us. And again this vivid image, uh, a gardening image of soil. And I think uh, one thing I love about Matthew's Gospel is uh, the extent to which it portrays uh, that Jesus always taught through story. And uh, he, we're not only told stories of his miracles um, and of the things that he did, but Jesus also teaches through story. And uh, the most powerful thing about testimony is uh, that it conveys um, so many different layers of truth. It conveys that we're all different, that God speaks to us differently. Uh, it conveys uh, so often uh, the reality of the wrestle that we have when we, we hear an uncomfortable truth and we try to work out uh, how to apply it uh, in our own lives. And uh, this uh, parable, more I think than any, 
really also speaks to the process of our Christian faith where God is constantly weeding out mistaken beliefs, weeding out um, lies or hurts, uh, all those things that need to be cleared out of the way in order for the good seed of his truth to be planted in us uh, in that good soil that can actually take in the rain um, and have space uh, for those roots to go deep. Um, and I think we should be really encouraged to um, just uh, really allow God to um, just speak to us as we, we're going to read this uh, parable again before we pray. Uh, but just to really enliven that and give us some vivid examples of, of uh, how his truths are starting to take root in our lives. Um, and, but also to really instill in us a willingness uh, to keep speaking about the, God, the things that God is doing in our lives because actually it's when we uh, share our stories with others that others also grow in their faiths and I think that was what was so powerful about All in Church a few weeks ago when Joe and Solomon uh, shared their stories we've had so much feedback of how faith building that was to hear of the way that God has done that work in their lives. And we, you know, as pastors, the most inspiring thing that we see, uh, which makes our jobs really worthwhile actually, is when we see people who are just captivated by uh, the gospel and captivated by what God is doing in and through their lives, it's, uh, it's such an inspiring thing to see. And I think this is the picture of what Jesus is bringing us um, through this parable. And it's such a, a perfectly timed uh uh, parable for this week as we prepare for Pentecost Sunday because we want to lead you in prayers of expectation and anticipation because um, it's really only God's spirit which fell at Pentecost who can make this abundance uh, this abundant crop really come uh, through in our lives and yet as much as those early believers expected God's power to fall uh, it was totally unexpected in the way that it happened in the end and so they had to be ready for God to work in a powerful way but in a different way from what they expected and, and we're in that kind of season now where we're having to look for God's uh, growth in his life in unexpected places and unexpected times so we're going to read this again and then we'd love to pray with you and lead you in prayers of expectation that same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. As we bring this parable uh, with us into prayer tonight um, and we make it personal to us as Jesus intended it, what we realise is uh, that we are ourselves not one type of soil but we have all of these different soils um, in operation in our own hearts and lives and so we want to start tonight by bringing to God and offering to him those places uh, that are rocky in our own hearts and life, lives where we've got stuck. We know that uh, we are choked by other concerns or other um, priorities and focuses that we need to actually bring to God and allow him to open up and to dig deep into our hearts and to create a fertile place and so I just encourage you to take um, 20 or 30 seconds now and just to offer up to God those places in your own heart that you know are dry uh, or rocky or choked um, and it's by the God's spirit uh, that we renew that the soil of our lives is deepened so why don't we just bring those um, areas to him without shame without embarrassment but uh, with boldness tonight And as we come to that uh, positive image, that final type of soil that Jesus explains, uh, he's describing us um, as we live under uh, the Holy Spirit and um, the Spirit's guidance and goodness as that fills us up. And so tonight, 
uh, we're just going to offer to God those places uh, where uh, we just want to bring and invite God's blessing. Uh, they may be your work, your livelihood. Um, they may be your family, your children, um, other relationships. Uh, it may be in all sorts of different areas. I just invite you to bring those before God. And we're just going to invite uh, God's blessing upon those areas. Lord, we thank you that you are the spirit of life, that it's only by you that we have life in abundance. And Lord, we just express our faith tonight that we want to see your goodness. We want to see the fullness of what you have for us. Lord, we don't want to miss out uh, like those other types of soil. We want to see the abundance of your goodness and blessing and productivity in our lives. And so Lord, we bring to you all these things. And as the Apostle Paul says, I planted Apollos water, but it's God who brings the growth. And so, Lord, tonight we express our faith in you. We look forward uh, to celebrating Pentecost Sunday, which is a reminder of all that you can do through your people. And so, Lord, we humbly offer up our lives. May you breathe afresh on us tonight, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, well, thanks for joining us, everyone, for evening prayer uh, once again. We hope you're having a great week. Uh, we hope you get a chance to get some rest over the long weekend and can join us for our final online services on Sunday at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Uh, for Pentecost Sunday. That's going to be a great final service. And then we're gathering back in the church uh, Sunday week, the 6th of June, 7th of June, sorry. We're really looking forward to that. So we hope you can join us in both those places. Hey, God bless you all. I'll see you there. God from whom blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above his heavenly hosts praise Father 